So we're on to section 1.4 of population and settlement, which is about population density and distribution. This is a relatively short section, so we're going to get through everything in one video here. So we're going to look at the social, economic, environmental and political factors leading to population density and distribution. And then we're going to look at a case study. Nice and easy. Population density, people per square kilometer. Then we've got population distribution. Uh, this is how they're organized into particular regions. So sparsely populated areas are areas with a low population density and densely populated areas are an area of high population density. A couple of examples, for example, this populated uh, area, you see it's up in the mountains, maybe because of that, a lack of resources, colder weather at times of year, for instance. We see a classic typical urban environment, so we can see lots of high-rise buildings, um, lots of different transport facilities, parks, lights, very different uh, and, and a harsh contrast to the other one. So this one would be dense populated here. So we divide most things up into SEEP. So those could be the impacts of a volcanic eruption. Think SEEP. Social, economic, environmental, and political. We divide it up into this because it allows students then to talk about different topics so you don't get caught up talking about the same point, repeat yourself, and it just makes you think a little bit more. Social reasons why this is sparsely populated. Well, the one on the left is going to have a lack of services. So you're not going to have things like, let's say, hospitals, um, you're not going to have maybe sports grounds if you like playing football or that type of thing. Um, so yeah, you're going to be lacking some of the services there. So people might not want to live there. Education then uh, as one of the services. So different levels in different places, like a sparsely populated area may have a primary school, but it's unlikely to have like a secondary or high school level. You see a lack of professionals, which means they can't offer the work anyways there, like teachers, doctors, postal workers. Reduced amenities, things to do in the area might be limited. For some people, they would look at a landscape like this and say, oh, this is lovely. There's lots of outdoor things to do. But for other people who don't like that, they might not find there's too much to do there. Uh, counter urbanization, though, we might see changing the trend. So people might be looking for isolation and want to move into isolated communities where there is a sparse population, trying not to increase it too much and certainly not encouraging people to move around them. Uh, we look at mechanization of agriculture and mining, meaning there's not many jobs in the rural area now. So we see sparsely populated people because they can't get jobs in the area. High order services, then what does that mean? It just means like we said on the, the left there with education. So for them, they might have things like a university and they might have specialist doctors for certain diseases, for, for instance, which might not be the case in the sparsely populated areas. Good variety of jobs, good services, communication set up with uh, lots of different settlements. So you can communicate or travel between lots of different cities, for example, if you live near an airport or a train station. You have rural to urban migrants coming in for all of the same reasons there that we mentioned in the Migration section, more social services. We mentioned services, but social services, like if you're uh, elderly dependent, you might need more care around the clock or you might need a nursery for children. And we mentioned already the job type. So think about it out in the sparsely populated area, you might see a decline of these industries like agriculture, mining and fishing. So they might be reducing the amount of people that want to work in those jobs. And as we mentioned before, mechanization then may take over uh, and, and take some of those jobs. So a lot of income from the primary industry. Hey, as always, if that was useful, like, subscribe, and I'll be able to post more videos then. But also, if you want the rest of the content, follow the links below and you should find what you're looking for. All right. Good luck, guys.